Welcome to History Short's Forgotten War Stories Month. In light of the 80th anniversary of D-Day, I decided to dedicate the month of June to highlighting some astonishing, bewildering, and sometimes just downright forgotten stories from the war's past. The month will be divided into weeks dedicated to World War II Europe, the Pacific War, World War I, and the American Civil War. If you have a comment, you can find us at www.historyshortspodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook at History Shorts Podcast for daily fun facts and much more. If you are enjoying this podcast, you can support the show by leaving a review wherever you listen, or you can support the show on a one-time basis by buying me a coffee at buymecoffee.com forward slash History Shorts Podcast. During World War II, both the United States and Canada interned German prisoners of war in camps located within their territories. But did you know that on the morning of January 24, 1941, a lone German POW held in Canada managed to escape only to become a minor national celebrity in the process? I am your host, Peter Zablocki, and this is History Shorts. During the Second World War, the United States and Canada operated a network of POW camps across their respective countries to house captured enemy soldiers, including German POWs. Because the United States was not at war until late 1941 and Canada entered the conflict along with Britain in 1939, initially all the German POW camps were located primarily in Canada. Overall, the treatment of German POWs in North America was in accordance with the guidelines set forth by the Geneva Conventions. The German POWs were generally treated humanely and provided with adequate food, shelter, and medical care. Many were also allowed to work on farms and in other civilian jobs as part of the labor shortage caused by the war. Yet none of that stopped Luftwaffe pilot Oberlieutenant Franz von Vera from leaping out of the train window on a cold January day in 1941 while en route through Ontario to a POW camp on the Canadian shores of Lake Superior. Vera's story began in September 1940 when Franz, a skilled Luftwaffe pilot, was flying as a member of the invasion force during the Battle of Britain. On September 5, 1940, his Messerschmitt BF-109 was shut down over Kent, England during a dogfight with a British RAF fighter. Von Vera parachuted to safety and was taken as a prisoner of war by the British. Following his capture, Von Vera was sent to a series of POW camps in England. Initially held in a camp near Maidstone, he was later transferred to other camps, including a maximum security facility on the Isle of Man in the UK. On October 7, 1940, while being transported by train to another POW camp, Von Vera made his first daring escape by jumping from the moving train near Motherwell, Scotland. Despite injuring his leg in a fall, he managed to evade capture and made his way to a nearby town where he sought shelter in a local hotel. Von Vera's escape sparked a massive manhunt by British authorities. He was eventually apprehended by police officers while trying to board a ship bound for Ireland. Von Vera's recapture made headlines in the British press and earned him the nickname, The One That Got Away. This time, the British decided to put the Atlantic Ocean between their escape-prone POW and his beloved Germany, sending him to a prisoner of war camp in Canada. Yet it was here when in 1941, Von Vera jumped once again. This time, once off the train in Canada, the young pilot hiked southward for 25 miles toward the icy St. Lawrence River, where he took a local fisherman's rowboat, secured to a small wooden pier along the bank, and proceeded to paddle it across to Ogdensburg, New York. At the time, the United States was not yet at war and would not be until December 7th's attack on Pearl Harbor. Von Vera was convinced that the still isolationist and neutral United States would help him with his passage back to his native Germany. To his surprise, the U.S. Immigration Patrol and Naturalization Service arrested him and charged him with illegal entry into the country. Handed over to local police and locked up in a small jail cell until proper authorities could be contacted in Washington, D.C., Von Vera wasted no time and instead got the attention of a local reporter and news photographer who happened to stop by the jail. Soon, others descended on Ogdensburg for a tell-all interview by a German Luftwaffe pilot, given from behind bars. One disbelieving reporter wrote about the conversation where Vera recalled his exploits. He gave the impression that he had single-handedly shot down the entire British Air Force, twice, 
By the next day, Vera's picture and boastful accounts graced the front pages of all local newspapers, with national papers soon grabbing and reprinting the headlines. Seeing the story in the New York Times, the German consulate in New York City quickly paid the pilot's $5,000 cash bond and whisked the young man into New York City. According to historian William B. Brewer, in New York City, Baron von Vera, as he was now being referred to, became an instant celebrity, a dashing Luftwaffe ace, an aristocrat by birth, and a perpetrator of two amazing escapes. He was wined and dined by the society elite at such plush nightclubs as Sardis, El Morocco, and the Diamond Horseshoe. But, just as quickly as he ascended the temporary celebrity status, the fall from grace was similarly drastic. Two months after being released by the German consulate, the German authorities in New York City learned that the United States government was going to hand Vera back to Canadian authorities. The criminal charge? Stealing the $25 rowboat in which he made his escape across the St. Lawrence River. With the U.S. authorities in possession of his arrest and deportation warrant on his trail, the German pilot disguised himself as a common laborer and set off on a train toward the Mexican border at El Paso, Texas, where he promptly slipped into Mexico. Vera then reached Mexico City, where the German embassy arranged for him to return to Germany. Von Vera's escape from British captivity and his successful evasion were portrayed by Nazi propaganda as acts of daring and defiance against the enemy. Nazi media outlets, including newspapers, radio broadcasts, and newsreels, extensively covered Van Vera's story, presenting him as a heroic figure who had outwitted his captors and demonstrated the indomitable spirit of the German people. Upon his return, Van Vera was greeted with a hero's welcome. His arrival was celebrated with fanfare and ceremony, with crowds lining the streets to catch a glimpse of the famed pilot. Now busy with official receptions, public speeches, and media coverage, all designed to glorify his exploits and reinforce his status as a symbol of German heroism. In recognition of his bravery and service to the fatherland, Adolf Hitler personally awarded Franz von Vera the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross, one of the highest honors bestowed by the German military. Following the celebrations and accolades he received for his escape, von Vera resumed his duties as a fighter pilot in the Luftwaffe. He continued to fly combat missions on the Eastern Front, where he demonstrated his skill and courage as a fighter ace, achieving even further success in aerial combat against Soviet forces. Tragically, von Vera's luck eventually ran out, and he was killed in action on October 25, 1941, during a mission over the English Channel. His plane crashed into the North Sea under circumstances that remain unclear, resulting in his untimely death at a young age and cementing his status as a martyr for the Nazi cause. Von Vera was the only confirmed Axis POW to escape Western custody and return to combat. Thanks for listening. Hello everyone. My name is Tom Kearns and I host the Anglo-Saxon England podcast, where I cover the history and culture of England from the departure of the Romans in the 5th century to the Norman Conquest in 1066. So far we've surveyed the collapse of Roman rule in Britain, the migration of the Anglo-Saxons, and the history of Northumbria from its beginnings in the mists of legend to its destruction at the hands of Viking raiders in the 9th century. I hope you'll come and give it a go.